Once the patient has been screened and is deemed safe to have an MRI scan, ask them to lie supine on the scanner table with their head in the head coil. Give the patient an emergency alarm, making sure they know how and when to use it. Give the patient ear protection in accordance with the manufacturer's guidelines. Attach the head coil Move the patient carefully into the scanner and centre to the glabella. Now move the patient fully into the scanner. Make sure the patient is calm and comfortable before leaving the room. Once in the control room, select the patient name in the browser or type in the details manually. Ensure all details, including the patient weight, are entered correctly, so that the SAR levels can be calculated accurately. Register the patient as lying head first and supine. Here we'll demonstrate how to plan a scan of the temporomandibular joints, or TMJs. The TMJ is a synovial joint comprised of the condyle of the mandible and the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone, with an articular disc in between. Select the correct protocol according to your hospital and radiologist guidelines. Begin with the three-plane localizer sequence. On this localizer, plan the first sequence, which is a T2 axial. This will be used to plan all of the subsequent sequences in this protocol. To ensure coverage of the TMJ joints, you should include the frontal sinus superiorly and the lower lip inferiorly. On the coronal plane, angle the positioning block perpendicular to the midline of the brain and C-spine. Check the centering in the axial plane and apply. This next sequence is a localizer of the TMJs themselves. We should plan this on the acquired T2 axial sequence. Scrolling through, locate the mandibular condyles. This is the left condyle tracing down into the ramus and into the body of the mandible where the lower teeth are situated. And this is the right. Angle the right sagittal localizer perpendicular to the length of the right mandibular condyle and the same on the left side. For the coronal localizer, position the block through the length of the condyles. On the coronal plane, tilt the blocks angling along the right and left rami of the mandible and apply. In this protocol, we have PD or proton density weighted coronals of the right and left TMJs. We should plan this scan on the already acquired axial plane and the TMJ localizers. On the axial plane, locate the right TMJ. Angle parallel to the long axis of the right mandibular condyle and centre accordingly. Centre over the joint on the coronal plane. And here is the joint on the sagittal plane. Angle parallel to the ramus on the sagittal plane. Check positioning in all three planes, adjust and apply. Now follow the same method of planning for the left TMJ. Angle along the long axis of the mandibular condyle Centre in the coronal plane and angle along the ramus of the left mandible.
Next, a sagittal PD and T2 stir sequences of the right and left TMJs. Bring up the acquired right coronal PD images. On the axial image, plan the right PD sagittal sequence perpendicular to the long axis of the mandibular condyle. On the coronal plane, centre to the joint and angle along the right ramus of the mandible. Adjust the centering in the sagittal plane and apply. Follow this planning on the left side for the left TMJ by bringing up the acquired left coronal PD image. Angle perpendicular to the long axis of the condyle on the axial plane. Angle along the ramus on the coronal plane. Check the centering in the sagittal plane and apply. For the T2 stir sagittal images, copy the planning above. Be sure to copy the planning of the correct corresponding side. Check and apply. The final two sequences are PD sagittal right and left TMJs of an open mouth. This planning can be copied from the sequences above. For the right side, copy, check the planning and apply. And for the left side, again copy, check the planning and apply. Once all the closed mouth imaging has been acquired and reviewed for image quality, move the patient out from the bore of the magnet, instructing them to keep very still. Ask them to open their mouth and bite down on a syringe or bite block. In our department, a 50 mil syringe is used. If the patient's unable to open their mouth wide enough to hold a 50 mil syringe, then syringes of decreasing sizes should be tried. The mouth should be held open as wide as is comfortably possible. Once back in the control room, be sure to label the sequence with the size of the syringe you've used, or place a note in the patient record for the radiologist. Continue with the scan now. You should have reviewed your images as the scan proceeds. When reviewing images, we're looking for good image quality. This is a T2 axial. In T2 imaging, fluids and fat appear bright. As you can see, the cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF, and the vitreous humour within the eye is bright in this image. Again, here's the left mandibular condyle and right mandibular condyle. As mentioned previously, this image is essential in planning all subsequent scans. On this sagittal localizer, here is the TMJ joint. And here they are on the coronal localizer. This is the right TMJ joint.
and here is the left TMJ. As mentioned previously, it is composed of the mandibular condyle within the articular surface of the temporal bone, in between which lies an articular disc. This is the right sagittal PD image, where you can again see clearly the articulation of the joint and the angle of the ramus leading into the body of the mandible. PD images are very useful in visualising ligaments and cartilage. And here's the left TMJ PD image. This is a STIR image, which stands for Short Tau Inversion Recovery Imaging. Here fluids appear bright and fat appears dark. Note the dark signal within the mandible due to the suppression of fatty bone marrow. STIRs are useful in highlighting infection and bony edema. Lastly, we have the open mouth sagittal PD sequences. Notice how the mandible has shifted forward within the fossa of the temporal bone, as compared to the closed mouth sequence. Again, check that the image quality of the final images is satisfactory.